again you have reached the real dirt on today's dirt have my good buddy greg davidson hey say hey greg hey chip how you doing hey mm -hmm. listeners of the real dirt real dirtians uh greg's one of my oldest and best friends uh him and his wife elaine are dear people to us uh and you know the interesting thing about greg is he is in many ways, your average medical marijuana patient. Uh, he grows a little weed. He smokes a lot of weed. He goes <laughs> to the gross to the grow store. He goes to the dispensary. Um, he, you know, buys vape pens and and you know, I, I feel like you're just your 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 real average consumer, right? You maybe smoke a little bit more average, but. I mean, you, you use medical marijuana um, and uh, medical cannabis, and so that's that's why I wanted to have you on the show. Plus, we always have really good conversations when we're on the phone anyway, so uh, you're a good conversationalist. I lo love rapping with you, Chip. Yeah, it's, it's always fun. Yeah. I, uh, Greg, I, I met you, um, must have been 2004, uh... six. No, I was gonna say I was gonna say three, so three or four. It was pre Santa Cruz for me. Uh, you were you were in up Santa in, Cruz. You no, you were up in uh, Willow. You were actually the first time I met you. You were a self-proclaimed dirty hippie, and you had pitched a tent yes. at Charlie's. <laughs> Oh, okay. It was at one of the uh, Cannabis World. Uh, I actually, I actually met you on a. Tr I was uh, trimming. That's when I was an itinerant trimmer. Oh, trimmer. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was uh, <laughs> camping out. Camping out at Charlie's. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, we 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 met though through Cannabis Cannabis World or something. Correct. Right. right, which was an, yeah. an online group. We've talked about this in the past, uh, um, and it was uh, set up as part of a seed bay, so you could talk to breeders and growers about buying cannabis seeds, and then you could go buy them online at this seed was, auction site. Yeah, right. it was a, a, a loose <laughs> affiliation of uh, growers, uh, breeders, uh kind kind people and uh we all, as many of us as could uh met once or twice a year up in northern california yeah and you and you and charlie were were some of my first internet friends you charlie and and uh shanty baba mr nice seeds were all some of my first internet friends yeah yeah <laughs> Back in the back in the day, I uh, can I tell uh, the listeners my first impression of Chip was I knew that we had a different cat on our hands. Um, Chip had all of his weed in uh, mason jars. Chip was the very first guy to have his weed in mason jars. That's back when we all let it dry out in Ziploc bags, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's high tech because he's got mason jars." Oh man, you were probably still smoking Mexican weed back then. No, no, we were, <laughs> we were getting it from uh, we were getting it from Charlie. Yeah, no first names. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, he was your medical cannabis supplier, right? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Exactly. I, I I trimmed for medical cannabis. Right. That's how it works. Um, so, uh, uh, man, what, what's, uh, what are you smoking on today? Uh, I just, uh, wh while I saw that you used to had your uh, prior meeting in progress, I snuck outside real quick and uh, puffed a joint of gelato. And then I've got uh, a couple of pens here. And in my, uh, my left hand, I've got uh, some tangy. And in my yeah. right hand here, I've got what they call Ukiah Punch. And this is a punch. yeah, this is a raw gardens uh, live resin, and mm. and you know I've talked about live resin before. Yeah, totally love it. Yeah, yeah, love the it. taste, the taste was right on. Right on. What are you smoking? Um, 
<clears throat> man, you know, I've been kind of bored with our, our weed lately, but, uh, but right now I'm, I'm, I've been working on a salad that I like, which oh, is, yeah. uh, 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 man, mimosa mm -hmm. and gills nils. Right. Love Gills it. Nils is a swamp boy seed. And yeah, man, we really like this weed. I mean, <laughs> I didn't think I was. It, it, I don't know. It doesn't have like, to me, the like this drawing smell or appearance. It looks good. Don't get me wrong. And it smells great, you know, but like, I'm, I was totally proved wrong by this weed, Greg. Right. I immediately saw it and I was like, oh, man, commercial producer. You know, I don't know. Right. And because uh, it gets big, it grows easy. It doesn't have any problems. And then like it has an older look because it is uh, Georgia pine cross with the white. Oh, right. Nice. So, yeah, nice. yeah, totally. So it's an older plant, a place or something that they're not telling us what the Georgia pine is. Swamp boy seeds. Mm -hmm. I should get them on here and talk about it. But uh, they uh, uh, so I really like smoking this this weed. Right, it's great outdoor, right. great greenhouse weed, um, and we mix that with the mimosa, which uh, you know it's it has a citrus kush, you know, taste. So yeah, a blendo. I've had a, I'm uh, having a blendo. You, you've been a uh, a salad joint kind of guy. I yeah, I like salads for sure. Yeah. And, you know, salads are such a good way to like tell potential genetic combinations too yeah right something that like could be there or might be there um uh, but yeah i like pure joints too i'm just kind of bored with our weed right now and i remember back in the day when we were smoking a lot of arcade train wreck to get we would get tired of that of that creosote taste and you'd mix in a little of that lavender mm. oh that was a nice salad yeah, no, that, that that is that is a good fond memory. You know, we we planted some of those uh, train wreck back crosses we had, the T threes, T fours. Um, just recently, we've got a great pheno that's a train wreck. You know, but not carbon copy, but like really, really close. So uh, yeah, we're excited for that this out this outdoor season. All right, so now that we know, both know what we're smoking, I'm going to steer us back to uh, oh. when, when we first met. Yeah, okay. Um, really liked you right off. Uh, you, you were, um, back then you were uh, just off your activist days down in Georgia, mm -hmm. and that impressed me. That, that impressed me. I, re I really liked that about you. Um, but yeah, uh, at, at that point, I'd been using uh, medical marijuana for uh, the spasms in my legs associated with my, my paralysis. Um, and it's really, uh, uh, you know, back then, you, your doctors would always ask, you know, or there'd be forms to fill out. And, and uh, of course, I was always no no, because you didn't want your doctors yeah. to know. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Even if you had a medical condition, you didn't want your doctors to know. But this is before this is before uh, uh, 1996. Uh, so at that point, I'd been using it for 12 years uh, medicinally. Uh, then uh, 96 came along, and it kind of loosened up. Uh, got a, got a little bit better, um, and has gradually, you know, you've followed the legislation as close as anybody. It's, it's gotten a little bit better, but it's still not, not right. Um, I, I'm really conflicted about, uh, Proposition 64. Uh, it pretty much removed the whole medical marijuana scene. I mean, I, I, I don't really need to go to the dispensaries for other than the, the vape cartridges. But you I've noticed adult use dispensaries. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've noticed that there's, there's maybe one place left that will 
uh, ask if you've got a medical card. Um, and I think they'd give some break on the tax maybe, but that's about it. There's no, there's no, there's no compassion in the compassionate care act anymore. It's all about money. It's all about money. Um, all the places are really good about either a, uh, disabled persons or veteran discount, which I'm both. Um, which is nice because it pretty much wipes out your, your discount pretty much wipes out the excise tax that they're, that they're charging. Um, and the other thing that I, that I really, and I, and I talked to Jessica about this, um, it, it, proposition 64 just exploded the, the, uh, one use single use plastic market so we can just choke this planet even faster on plastic i mean everything yeah, yeah no shit dude yeah it's just it's really bad mm. you used to be able to go into a dispensary and they break out one of those big uh extra big mason jars and a set of uh and a set of tongs and you could pull a bud out you couldn't touch them but you could pull a bud out, you could look around and there'd be nice looking buds in there. Now everything is packaged in a, uh, got my props ready here, Chip. Now everything is packed in a glass jar or plastic jar like this. You can't see through it, so you can't see what you're getting. And of course, because of the size of the jar, everything is just mids, you know? I, I, I wonder, mm. uh, and you know some people, you know some people who might know the answer to this. What no. happened? Yeah, I know you, you, you. I know you know some people. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the big buds? Where'd they go? What happened to the big buds? Where I mean, did they go? I feel a song coming he on here. What happened right. to the big buds? Where did they go? I like it. <laughs> now I go to my dispensary. Well. All I get is mids. Oh, show. There, we just wrote a song. Yeah, See how easy that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Used to be my dealer had big buds. The dispensary's <laughs> got nothing but mids. <laughs> so, so what, seriously, though, what happened, what, what happened to these top coal? Where'd they go? <sighs> growers, Man, growers. okay, I'll tell you this, dude. All right. Is in California... And the rest of the country. Yeah. Everybody's buying grams and eights. Right. And right. it is better for the for the for the the buy the the dispensary or the buyer to have a consistent nugget size mm -hmm. in a sack of weed as opposed to like trophy nuggets how we all used to have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, people so talk big. about, oh, the weed used to be better. The weed used to be better, you know, and it's like, well, man, back when, like, we all had trophy nuggets, you know, <laughs> back when that was a thing, because, you yeah. know, the pounds would have small, to large nuggets, and um, the, it was a different story. And, you know, here in Oklahoma and in kind of in Colorado a little bit, you know, they shove everything in the back. Right, and Colorado is changing a bit, but here it's still everything goes in the bag. Big nugget, the small nugget. But they're often cut up, dude. Those okay, big so nuggets that, are often cut up. They're just getting cut down to it's it's to, better it's better for everybody if they're because of the packaging and mm -hmm. you know, the way people buy it. Cause it's not like potatoes where you go and buy Oh, I want this potato, that potato, three potato, four potato, you know, and right. each potato is bigger, different size. And then you weigh it all. And it's like, oh, that's 0.93 pounds and you pay six bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I, you know, we we're and we've talked about this for a long time, too, um, you know, is is I would like to go into a dispensary and just buy a nugget, buy it by the nugget, buy it by the gram, just like right. give me that. 4.6 gram nugget and that 2.8 gram nugget and right commercialism commercialism 
I've had uh, a lot, and and they'll talk to you. You know, the bud tenders and and even the owners of the of the dispensaries will talk to you and tell you that uh, they they get, and this is just amazing to me. They have people come in every day. Every day, yeah. yeah. Every day. <clears throat> At uh, Jessica's dispensary, Baker's Medical, wow. we got people that come in every day and buy an eight. Every day and buy two joints. Every day. Yeah. yeah. Why not cool. save up your money? Save up your money and and come in once a week and buy an ounce. I, I don't get it. Well, people. I mean, well, I will tell you what. That's going to happen more and more, and the social interaction is is definitely. Yeah. You know, going to change. Yeah. So. The people that used to show up and buy an eighth a day. I don't know. We have this thing at uh, the the local grow store. He makes uh, he makes uh, a compost tea every every uh, week, and then on Sunday, people who are customers can come in and uh, get their their uh, two gallons of compost tea for free, and it always turns into a a circle out in the back of, of three or four joints going around and we call it church. We call it church, church, teacher, church. Um, in the past couple of weeks, the past couple of weeks, church has been canceled. And on uh, the last week of it, everybody brought their own joints. We didn't have to pass a joint around. Wow, this episode is being recorded while I'm in, uh, uh, the County I'm in, in California, we're under uh, stay-at-home orders, so yeah. kind of a weird. I see. I see you've got your uh, orange jumpsuit on there. I got my I straight got, lock lockdown. I got my safety orange in case things you know, get wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, and it I've is trying. I've got enough weed in the freezer from I had a, I had a really good year this year. Um, we're because of Proposition 64, we we're finally able to blow it up in the backyard. And uh, with Chip's help, I, I gotta say, with Chip's help, uh, through a couple of rough patches, um, I turned out a really nice crop this year. So, uh, awesome, awesome, yeah. man. I went out right before the lockdown and bought uh, eight packs of rolling papers. The guy looked at me like I it was crazy after eight. <laughs> Actually, rolling papers and no tobacco. Oh, I got so, a couple of cases. I'm like, I don't know how long this shit's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're trying to stay really positive, doing it all, taking it as seriously as yeah. we should, regardless of like how we might feel about the whole scenario. And you know, it is uh, definitely a good time to like just take a second back, man. You know, yeah. I actually, dude, I've been doing podcasts left and right. Uh, uh, literally, I've had two others today. I've got two tomorrow. I had three yesterday. I had a webinar yesterday and then all the rest of the stuff that we decided we wanted to do. But yeah, man, we're just kicking it down the road and just staying home. You know, we're, at, we're this is my new home studio here at the ranch. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fancy. And uh, I, I, we're just sitting back, starting a big garden, taking care of all of our business. It's amazing how much work that, you know, you can do from a home office. And I've been home officing for a long time. And I know you do too. You yeah. guys have worked at home for years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when you use this tool like Zoom, like what we're using right now or Google Hangouts or, uh, man, it, 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 it changes everything. Yeah. Um, Man, I think it's a really good time to like be with your family and talk yeah. to some friends here and there, and yep, uh, enjoy one another's company. I, um, I've, wanted, I've wanted to be on the the real dirt since you started it. Yeah. You know, oh so. well, man, we're we're on we're on today. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, you know what? I think this is a perfect time for take a break. We'll sit back, we'll roll up a joint, we'll have a little break, and we'll come back and we'll talk about medical organic. Sounds All good. right, this is Chip with the Real Dirt, Chip and Greg. Thanks. Hey, this is Chip and the Real Dirt. 
here to today is like March 25th, 2020. And if you're like most of the country, wow, you're kind of concerned about what's going on in the world. Well, hey, don't be alarmed. The Real Dirt is a safe place to gather and listen and uh, enjoy this episode and others. If you're interested in more episodes of The Real Dirt, download them at therealdirt.com or on iTunes. Uh, subscribe and listen to all the episodes that we have there. Some are better than others, but I'll tell you what, there's, there's something great in every single one. So if you're sitting back bored, just uh, download some more episodes of The Real Dirt. RealDirt.com. Boom. Yeah. So you, you own those vape pens, huh? I do. Yeah, the vaping crisis didn't scare you none, man. Um, you know, as long as you're buying tested, that's a that's, quality product. That's the good thing about 64. That's one of the good things about 64. It's mm -hmm. got the little, uh, it's got the little, uh, you can't see this, but there's a, there's a sticker right here that, that is mandated by the state of California to go on these cartridges right. now. Right. So no, I, I never, uh, I never had it in me yeah and and you know with the weather changing i'm able to get outside and uh get back to smoke and flower get back to smoke and flower in fact i've got another uh got another prop for y'all here this is uh this is what i do wow. prop this is what i do when i'm uh locked up and can't can't get out these are all uh, these are all joints that, that i've rolled here and see so <laughs> Time comes and I can just boom out the door. <laughs> oh, that's your go bag. <laughs> yeah, that's my go bag. And then let me, let me, let me see a picture of that go bag again. <laughs> that was great. Uh, that's awesome. You'll have to take a picture of that and send it to me. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, all right. Yeah, look for Greg Davidson's go bag. My go oh, bag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's great. I've, uh, I learned from you that you don't want to have a shortage of joints. Never. Never. No. No. Never. No. No. Because no. you know you'll be uh, you'll be cruising along, it, life's cool, and then you get like a paper cut. <laughs> Finger, <laughs> can't, you can't roll. I hate that. I hate that. Okay. Yeah. For, fortunately, uh, my wife is a pretty good roller. Yeah, she's decent. She's decent. She's not. She's not great like me. But, um, I am, <laughs> you, I, you give yourself far too much credit. I've seen some. <laughs> I've I've smoked some of the pregnant guppies that you rolled. Hey, sometimes it's just function, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna. Uh, Chip and I are gonna try and steer this back to. Uh, oh, what, what, oh, this that's right. This isn't just a, like a play conversation. Hey, listen, Greg, I, I want to have you on to talk about medical cannabis. When, when, when did you get, tell me your cannabis story, when you got first involved with, with medical cannabis. Oh, man. First time I got involved with medical cannabis or first time I got high? Well, a, I mean, it's two wait, different, wait. it's two, it's really two different things. Yeah. Um, I, you know, uh, I, I'm. I think you're a medical cannabis user. When? How did you? How did you? Okay, here we go. When was the right. light bulb moment when you realized weed was medicine? Uh okay. Uh, fe February or March of 1985, okay. when uh, I had gotten out of the hospital after uh, my back injury. Uh, so, so I first realized, uh, cannabis was, um, medicine was in February or, or March of 1985 after I'd been released from the hospital and I was living with my dad and stepmom in Sacramento and had finally gotten to where I was 
uh, comfortable uh, going out of the house, going out and, and getting some fresh air, getting some exercise, started getting back in touch with uh, old friends and uh, got a sack from one of them and was, was being Mr. Sly, uh, going out in the garage and, and rolling up a quick one to take on my exercise uh journey mm -hmm. and, yeah. and 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 i'm Your like, exercise role yeah let me think i'm like 26 years old and my dad busts me i get busted by my dad right and and he's like you know you can just roll that up in the house and <laughs> take it with you so I obviously wasn't as sly as what i thought i would be in. um your mom and dad were inside but the house I, going, going, just just go out there and tell him you can do it in the house. <laughs> tell him he can do it in the house, exactly. Um, so I uh, was smoking, n not with the idea of cannabis as medicine, but I noticed that when I w would smoke, my the spasms in my legs would really calm down. And I noticed that the more I smoked, the more the spasms in my legs would let up. And then I thought, you know, maybe I don't need to take all these liver killing medicines that the doctors have prescribed for me if I can replace it with what at the time was medicine. Med the first so I I'm I was a medical marijuana patient when you were still running around in three corner pants no way dude i was planting weed in 1985 okay all right but you get totally. my point you get my point it's right. been a long but i was time. i was just out of diapers when I was yeah, just out of diapers right. so I, I i thought you know i i i had to keep it from my doctors back then you, right you, really you couldn't keep it from, you couldn't mention yeah, it all but, it was verbatim because you, you, it was all you were in the VA at that time. I mean, you were going to VA hospitals, and... the University, University of California system, okay, uh, which has which has uh, hospitals at various at various campuses around the around the country, around the state. Um, so they may have understood, but you know, it's not something that you, you know. I went, to... I went through different doctors, and I and, and I yeah, know I that my that. first doctor would have been like good for you you know and then the, and then he moved on and the next doctor would have been i'm calling the police you know you just get a vibe you get a vibe from people and uh then i had a doctor for a long long time that i, I think she she hardly listened to anything that i said anyway but i don't think that she would have been up or down about it so then um, we're going we're gonna to jump forward a long, long time. And uh, I got bladder cancer in uh, 2018. I was diagnosed with bladder cancer in like February of uh, 2018. And uh, man, there's nothing like the feeling of a doctor walking in and saying, you've got cancer. But at the same time, he was really, he was a really good doctor, and uh, I, I realized right then in his office that I was going to beat it. Um, he, he, underneath this shirt, I've got a whole slew of tattoos, and I think that they, they, you know, one, one of them's the, the chemical symbol for THC, and one of the chemical symbol for for CBD, and the doctors always key on those right away, and. You know, when you tell them what that is, like, this guy's for real. This guy, I, I think they know not to ask, you know, their questions anymore. But the guy said to me, uh, amongst other things, he said, if you use uh, marijuana, he said, use more. He says, if you don't use it now, start. And if you do use it, use more. Hmm. So uh, I was like, I like Whoa. this guy. I like yeah, this guy. Uh, and that's how that's how the uh, you know just to fast forward thing. That's how the attitude amongst the doctors 
in the UC system changed mm -hmm. over over the years. I, I and, uh, so I used uh, we have a mutual friend in Colorado who does uh, real high grade CBD uh, and oil. I got tons of that from him and uh, talked to Jessica uh, and, and you about how I developed the three-legged stool for my recovery. And it was uh, Western medicine, which involved surgery uh, and chemotherapy uh, combined with, uh, you know, some other various uh, medicines. Uh, the second leg of the stool was Eastern medicine and big shout out to Jessica Baker. She was my rock right there. She developed a program for me of, uh, of herbs, proprietary herbs that came from a place in Berkeley. Uh, she started, uh, there's my wife Elaine that made the, hi Elaine, that made the reishi mushroom tea and the chaga root tea that tasted just horrible dirty uh, yeah. and i had a, a friend uh can i give a can i give a shout out to uh a sure. friend back in back in uh, uh matthew uh no last names uh, but Imagine matthew no last names yeah uh, you know who you are yeah uh, matthew he's a healer he's a chiropractor uh and a and a chaga root hunter it mm, turned out i did not he realize did he he goes out and he and he harvests uh chaga roots so he sent me wow chaga. i'm gonna have uh, to hook him and jess up so that was my uh, oh they know each other so mm -hmm. that was my second leg of the stool and then the third leg of the stool was uh was all about cannabis it was all about cannabis man i smoked dropping up on weed i smoked i ate I used drops. I used poultice. I think I used everything except those suppositories, man. I just, you know, I just couldn't go. <laughs> oh man, you know when you really got to get up in there, right? <laughs> you know, but I, <laughs> I made up for it with uh, every other method that you could, um, and I, and I really think that. I really think that those three things, uh, Western medicine, Eastern medicine, and, and then uh, the power of, of medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. medical marijuana. So now you can bring it up to anyone. You can talk about yeah. that you use medical marijuana to anyone now. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, uh, in fact, this past year, uh, when I knew that I was going to grow big, um, I went around to all the neighbors and I, you know, fessed up to my. Oh, that's awesome! In the of, past, you were nervous about it. I was. I had to be. I had to be very careful. Um, mm -hmm. Although we have really good neighbors and and we've known them for a long time, you know, you don't want to offend anybody. You don't know the, their feelings about it, and. Uh, so I, so I went from door to door to around to the neighbors and uh, told them, you know, I'm going to be growing. And uh, I said, and, and they were all fine with it. They were all, they were all great with it. And I said, by the way, did you know that I'd been growing outlaw style for years? None of them, none of them had a clue. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was able to grow. I was able to grow my own medicine uh this year and the state makes it real easy there's uh yeah. real, real oh, good, so easy man real good nursery that has high quality clones uh mm. chip, chip knows who i'm talking about uh i used a uh nutrient line uh that that uh, was a lot harder than it than it needed to be but i think it was i think it was worth it and uh, I grew in grew in wine or, barrel. Grew in, grew or, in wine. Organ organ zone nectar of the gods. That's what you use, right? Yeah, and, uh, nectar for the most for, part. Nectar for right. the gods. And, nectar for the gods. 
Yeah, it was like an 11 part thing. Great product, too complicated. For great. sure. Great product, too complicated. Yeah. Yeah, I had to I had to contact you a couple of times and say, why am I giving my plants carbon? <laughs> um, well, there's only instruction, just follow it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they got it, good product, man. You know, it's, it's yeah. They, they do have fourteen pro, pro uh, fourteen pieces to the puzzle, though. I, I turned out some really really nice. Uh, uh, medical marijuana and I'm, I'm 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 set i mean if the you know if this is a zombie apocalypse man i'm i'm good i'm i've got jars sealed up out there i meant to <laughs> tell you do you remember the legendary apk uh, we called it alder point kush and I, I, rem I do remember it but but i was okay. never that i i wasn't I wasn't that into that one, but I, I, it just never crossed my path the same way as it did you guys. But so I remember it. I broke out a uh, jar of that that has been sealed up for 15 years. No way. Yes. Holy shit. And I smoked it with our, our mutual friend. Uh, In the freezer? Had you forgotten about it or purposely it was back oh, there? I totally knew. And, and I knew right. at some I was going to smoke with, with our friend that owns the seed bank. Mm -hmm. Can I give him a shout out? Absolutely. Oh, man. Oh, cool. Who, who's our friend that owns the seed bank? My best friend. In, my best friend. Oh, oh, Shaw, 707, 707 Seeds. Yeah, totally. Oh. We got some of his uh, 707 Kush going on down here in the 405. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I know. But, saw it. Um, so he, he and I've been, he and I've been friends for a long time. He actually got me the cutting of that, of that, uh, Alder Point Kush. So I broke it open, rolled a joint, smoked it with him. I, and, and then told him what it was and showed him the jar. It was, it, it had lost a little bit of, it used to have a really nice spicy smell. Now it just kind of had a flat smell but as far as taste and getting you high it, it had lost nothing and it had been in my freezer for 15 years <laughs> oh that's awesome we smoked some uh we smoked some of uh, fletcher's malawi and l5 haze recently though that we had it was in the back of the refrigerator for 18 months yeah maybe maybe more yeah right and uh, it it uh, it lost its color a little bit. Didn't have an initial smell, but you broke it open, and there was a smell, and it smoked just fine. Had you uh, had you sealed it and then put it in just a, in a jar, a, just just in a jar, yeah. dried right, tight, yeah. put in the wine cooler. Buy yourselves a vacuum sealer, kids. Oh, we, we I've got I've got a vacuum sealer. It was just you know like. Oh, we got too much weed. Let me just put this in here. And don't yeah. have to. Right. So, right. yeah, that was, uh, that was a fun experience. So that's what I did with that's what I did with this year's model. Um, I had a nice mix of SFBOG as chip nose. I'm, a, I'm one of those uh, fuel oil kind of guys. And then with Jessica's help, I was able to develop um, – the terpene profile. Yeah. That, what's your what's your what's your terp profile, bro? Man, I gotta have the limonene. Limonene. Lemonine myrcene? A little a little of that. Um, you know what works out uh, strain wise for me, and and it's mm -hmm. funny because it's one I've always loved, is uh sour diesel. Oh yeah. Sour diesel. Yeah. And then yeah, the any anything like that. Uh Chem Dog, the the real dank OG. <clears throat> uh my favorite OG is uh, is uh Tahoe OG, but I couldn't find that, but I, I grew some really nice SFV OG. Mm -hmm. And my garden star was a replacement plant. Uh I had a Venom OG that was not uh was not working. And I sent my boy Chip a picture of it. 
And he said, pull it up. And it was pretty late in the season. But I was able to get uh, uh, from the, the same nursery uh, some do si put in mm. do si dough, and man. Did uh, great. That, uh, it did yeah. great. Did great. It was super easy to grow, super easy to trim, and uh, just chunky, uh, rock hard buds that. Uh, taste of uh you can taste the cookie influence but uh also um you can you can get that limonene uh Mm -hmm. but uh man i wish we could get a hold of some genius you remember oh you know what we we actually just planted out a seed run of the apollo 11 i think looking for that genius pheno and man I, I think we came close i think we came close man i think that, you'd be uh, uh i think you'd be impressed yeah some of my favorite weed genius oh my god shit's great yeah yeah shit's great so man let, let me ask you a couple medical marijuana questions all right go you are an average consumer if you could say anything to the dispensaries what it was if you have all the dispensaries in the country listening to you because you very well could what do you want to tell them wow as an average cannabis medical cannabis consumer uh this is gonna sound harsh no 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 no. it's good criticism stop with the bait and switch oh really yeah bait yeah. and switch yeah it's a bad problem it's a bad problem they'll show how does the a... bait and how does okay, it work which works bait and switch switch works this way they put a bud into a clear lucite jar that has a magnifying glass built into the lid mm-hmm. and the bud is just dank Beautiful. yeah frosty uh perfect you can tell it's got a perfect <laughs> to it and so you so you buy an eighth of that and you bring it home and it's not even the same weed it's sad it's sad but true and and one a would be man we got to cut down on the on the plastic Got to cut down on the plastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, I was going to ask you what you would say to the legislators if they were listening to this and the regulators, because they are, they're, they're out there, man. They're oh, that's, show. that's an easy one. I don't even have to think on that one. Legalize it. <laughs> well, one, one of the, well, one of the things is less plastic. You just told them yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Um, definitely require less plastic. Um, I get what you're trying to do, but people are responsible. Patients are responsible enough. And, and, uh, you know, I hesitate to use the word patients anymore. Let's just say users. Mm-hmm. Users are, are reliable enough that you can put it in a paper bag and staple it closed. You know, we don't need, we don't need, uh, Everything that we're buying in one plastic or glass jar, right. uh, and then put it inside of. Uh, I meant to have one of those ready, but you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah, single yeah, yeah. black Ziploc exit container, a secure exit yeah. container. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That I knew they had a name. The exit yeah. container. Uh, that what can you do with those a- afterwards? And oh, now man, the waste is tremendous. Yeah, and now our uh, recycling, our recycling uh, won't accept that kind of stuff. No. Hmm. All right. So, so dispensary owners legislation. Right. What, what could you? What, what do you want to say to the commercial growers, the people that are growing this stuff? Um. Learn how to properly cure your cannabis 
Man, I, I, I hate to keep banging your drum because your head's not going to fit in the studio. But, but Chip taught me <laughs> more good cannabis gets ruined in the curing process than at any other point. It's it's not right. it's not easy to grow great weed, but it it's not super hard. Um, you can trim it, you can you can you can dry it, and 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 you know the merits of wet trimming versus dry trimming. I'm I'm a dry trimmer. I always have been. Uh, but then there's that last step that really brings out the taste, brings out the flavor profile, and that's the that's the curing. So you growers that's out there, it, right. I know you're trying to get your product to market as, as fast as you can. You know, you've, you've gone through all the hoops. I know what, what, what they all are. And then you want to get your product to the dispensary, but take a little bit of extra time and, and give it a nice cure. Uh, Chip uh, told me in, in uh, Colorado, and I didn't know this, Colorado is a super dry state, super hard to uh, dry and get a, a proper cure. Uh, so here in, in California, where we've got the proper climate for it, do it. That's my advice. Next question, please. Next question. All right. Well, extractors. There, there's the next oh. thing. Wow. As a consumer, a medical you marijuana know. consumer, medical cannabis consumer, what okay. do you have to say to the extractors? Because this is perfect information for all of these guys. What is my average consumer? I, I see a drop off in uh, the wax and resin and that kind of that kind of product and a, a better uh, job being done with these mm. with these and I know it's hard not everybody can do it but if you can do it think about becoming a live resin extractor it mm. it just the flavor you don't have to add terpenes back in because they're there. Yeah. So ask me a long question, Chip, so I can hit this thing. <laughs> <laughs> waving it around like, but go. Oh, man, no, I think, I, I think those are, I got what I wanted, really. You know, the grower, the extractor, the distributor, the legislator. I mean, I, we, we you know, <clears throat> talked about, uh, uh, how you can talk about it now you used to not talk about it you talk to your neighbors yeah. about it yeah uh, you know make how regulations actually you know really made you feel better about it um and uh that there's we've both talked about this though there's it man it's harder to get great great product no right it, yeah yeah it it really is that mm -hmm. uh, We've had, um, uh, there, it's easy to get good extracts. It's, yes. It's, it's real easy for somebody to make an SOP of an extract. It's really easy to be like, oh, if you treat this weed this way and, and you put in a recipe with growing ganja is not exactly the same every time. No, no right. it's, it's a hard, it's a hard uh, to do it right. To do it right is one thing you one thing you told me. Uh, Chip Chip seems to have enjoyed smoking my cannabis over the years. Oh, yeah, I've, I've smoked as much of Greg's weed as I can. <laughs> quite a bit, I gotta say, which is quite a bit. Um, one thing you always said, and and I appreciated you saying this was. Uh, because of my situation, I'm able to be with my plants every day and give them love, and that mm -hmm. that makes up, that makes up for a lot of a lot of things. So oh, yeah. absolutely, if you don't need a bunch of gear to grow weed, I mean, of course we nah. love it. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it doesn't take much. 
um, as long as uh, you got a pot and some soil and a little bit of fertilizer and some seed or a clone, like water. Yeah. Right. There's, 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 uh, so many seed companies, uh, out so there. Stuff now. Yeah. Yeah. Like Fletcher's just turning out some crazy good stuff. Oh, dude. Um, he, uh, I mean, he, he's hands down one of the top breeders in the world. Yeah. You know, I'm proud. I'm proud to, proud to know him call him bro right. me too me too yeah. i knew him i knew, I knew him, him when i knew him when he was like 15 lying to be at his, the parties we were at <laughs> right you'd look over there and you'd be like who's that kid i never can tell how in old anybody where did he is. get that crazy good weed sitting right. in front of him yeah oh, right you know. and he's got he's got a fucking sixty thousand dollar car too so he must be 21 right yeah, he wasn't even old enough to drive. Somebody else drove him. No, no, no. We've known a we've known a lot of uh, we've known a lot of characters in our day. Uh, Eddie, you remember Eddie? Oh, uh, Lep. Yeah, totally. He just came up yesterday Lep. in conversation. Eddie Lep. I'd love to get Eddie Lep on the show, man. Oh my God, he's got some of the best stories ever. Yeah, I said uh, we had a friend. That this is uh, going back to our CWGA days uh, that had a, a party for all of us at the end of the year. And uh, oh man, yeah, that that's where met, that's where I met Jessica for the first time. Mm-hmm. I walked mm-hmm. walked in the party. You were there, and and uh, there was this girl just tearing up a foosball table, and you said, "That's that's Jessica." Mm-hmm. Um, and since uh, the four of us, my wife Elaine and Chip and Jessica and I have been uh, become really good friends, we've got some great stories. Uh, Chip eating pecan pie <laughs> with chopsticks <laughs> still makes us laugh. We had been up there for the weekend, and and all the silverware was gone, but there was still <laughs> pecan pie. And Chip showed us his. Uh, I'm got, I got oh, mad chopsticks. Guys, man. Man. You know, there that's an go. off the that's a that's an off the grid living on the road item right there, chopsticks. That's how I've got such a good usage of them. Uh is yeah. uh when we so lift off the grid without, we use chopsticks. Okay. And the and the rest of us did not go without entertainment. It was, it was good times. Good times, good times, good times. Good times. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, so so uh man what what kind of what kind of weeds you looking to plant this next year you know i'm really interested in doing some affies i listened to your show mm. about uh about the affies and i and i <clears throat> i did put in a lot of time last year and i don't want to put in as much time this year mm. right so um you kind of sold me your your show kind of sold me on doing some feminized affies mm-hmm. in fact we need to, we need to talk about uh uh seed source for and you know i, I tell you y- you know you need to contact uh caleb over at csi man he's got all the the genetics that would be perfect for you short slow growers okay you know a lot of that urkel and uh yeah that stuff you know uh is basis of a lot of his crosses in the past and then he's got some straight afghanistan and um yeah i think he's a great person to talk to great person cool Cool. well at some point this is going to pass and we want to be able to we want to be able to go on some day trips maybe some overnight trips this coming year when uh when uh, what what will well, let's solve your problem? What your what was your you had the water limit? Well, I can I can just like count backwards from a certain date and know you know when to plant them instead mm-hmm. of going getting some clones and mm-hmm. worrying from uh, I've got a lot of the infrastructure in now. I'm looking at my my pots that are out mm-hmm. there. Um, so what, what what keeps you being home so much? Is because they need to be watered. The, yeah, they need to be watered, and and then mixing up nutrients. So there's no way 
I'm going to use the, the same nutrient. I can, I can solve all those problems for you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, your problems are simply, simple, so, simply solved. One, it's uh, use some sort of uh, pre-mixed organic nutrient or make your own that you add to the soil that you're using. There's a couple mm -hmm. of recipes we could talk about. Okay. And uh, um, then put in a simple drip system that just comes off your water hose and it's just water. Yeah. Right? You occasionally want to feed it with something, then make up some jugs and nutrients and, and feed, you know, your, your plants. That yeah. was my thing this year. Cause we're, we're prone to uh, some really where I live is uh, at the upper end <laughs> of the uh, San Joaquin beginning. You know of, exactly how much your plants are drinking with water. I bet. Oh, and there was a, there was a point where the, the ones in the half wine barrels mm -hmm. were, they were getting uh, 10 gallons of water a day. We had yeah. a freak yeah. issue. Simple drip freakish. system. We can, we can make all that happen. Yeah, we had a freakish heat wave that, that we were seeing uh, temperatures in the 100 and teens, mm. you know, day after day. And it was... Yeah, it we, was, we had it that was, here last year, too. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, you it had... Was 90, it was 91 degrees here yesterday. I, I know you had some uh, uh, weather problems. You got a late start, and then yeah. um, heat, heat I, saw your post, I saw your post today about the bugs. Man, that was yeah. got to be on that's that my shit. Here, cabbage loopers. I guess I need to put some cabbage in because I have a problem with cabbage looper bugs. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, companion planting can help you guys for sure. And, you know, uh, there are some there are some simple uh, uh, pheromone boxes to draw the, the bugs there. They the cabbage loopers, they're actually I believe they live in the soil. They come out of the soil. Right. So you could like, you know, treat no, the soil a, somehow. No, they're a small. They're, I, I think the bug that you the, the worm that you posted today that mm -hmm. might have been a cabbage looper. Mm -hmm. They come on a small white moth, like maybe the size of a nickel. Mm -hmm. You'll see these white moths flying around your uh, sure. grow, and then a few days later, you know the classic sign: a few brown leaves on the outside, and you go and pull on them. And the whole top of the bud comes off. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're they're ugly. Yeah, there's a few different versions that we have down here. We've got the tomato hookworm. We've got the quote unquote garden worm, um, but they're they're fairly large. Uh, yeah, you can uh, burn the ground, and it mm -hmm. burns off any of those. Uh, you know. Um, any any of them that are in the ground over the winter yeah all right and uh, then pheromone boxes attract the moths so then they you you catch the moths in the pheromone boxes instead of on your buds yeah and then you gotta well, pick it, that shit out and look for it daily yeah. it, it, but it's something that you know i, I wish more people i I don't want to put the dispensaries out of business. That's, you know, that's not no. my. No, of course not. Goal. But I you do like want to, the dispensaries. I I'd like to see more people growing their own. I'd like to see more people at the grow stores and less people at. The Me too. Me too. You know? Yeah, yeah. There, oh. There's every <clears throat> every uh, grow store owner that I've ever known is willing to just talk with you for as long as it takes you know we're good yeah 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 right. they are yeah all you got all you guys i mean chip i uh our our friendship goes so deep that uh i can call him with uh a, a quote unquote emergency in the crop and uh He'll get back to me within six hours and and has solved everyone. Has solved everyone. That's not bad. You're on my six hour list. 
I have mine in the six hour. <laughs> You're on the, the six, six hour list. Six hour right. callback. <laughs> but but yeah, it is it is something that uh, I would like to see the legislators who are uh, uh, listening to your show and may come on at a, in, in the future. I'd like to see them uh, work towards a uniform thing. Because even here in California, it's not very uniform. You know, it changes sure. from <clears throat> town to town. It changes from town to town. That's the beauty of, well, Oklahoma is state law, right? State law right. rules. So the individual counties and cities can't, can, can, can't manipulate it quite as much as other places like California. Right. Well, Greg, I have uh, appreciated this little conversation we had, man. It's felt like, to me, it's felt like almost any other phone call we've had. It, it's gone on a little longer than our usual phone call. Maybe, maybe a little bit. We talk about 40 minutes, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for having me having uh, me on your show. Thanks for having me on your show. Um, thanks for having me on your show. No, thanks for having me on your show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been another fine wasted hour of your time by listening to The Real Dirt. My name's Chip Baker, and uh, this has been The Real Dirt.